friends, Brandon Aker here, and I'm joined by Samurai Guitarist. Thanks hey, so much for being here. I just gave him his first ever classical guitar lesson, yep. which was a great time. And now we're going to turn the tables, and I'm going to have my first ever blues guitar lesson, which I'm super psyched about. I think the first thing is to discuss what is the blues, and the blues has kind of multiple meanings. Uh, the blues is a genre first and foremost, but it's also a chord progression. And so the blues chord progression is the 12 bar blues. And at its simplest form, what you have is you have the one chord of a scale. You have that for four bars. So if we were in the key of E, which I think we're gonna to do today, in the key of E, you would have an E chord for four bars. Now, typically in the blues, you would treat that as an E dominant seven chord. So like, the yeah, so it's an E dominant 7 is what you would play for 4 bars. And we're going to come back to that, we're going to circle back to that, but we're just going to talk about the form right now. Um, and then for the next 2 bars, you go up to the 4 chord, the 4 dominant 7. Yep. So typically in music, you if you're thinking in the terms of typical theory, you would have so the 1 chord would be the major 7, and then the 4 chords major 7, but for the blues, we're just going dominant 7s all the way home. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going then, uh, so first it's E, E7, 4 bars. And then, and then A7 for two bars, then back to E7 for two bars. And so that is the first eight bars of the blues. And then we go to what's called the turnaround, mm. which kind of loops everything back around. And the first chord of the turnaround is B7, one bar, A7, one bar, oh. or whatever way you want yeah, to play sure, it. Sure. And then E7, one bar, and then B7, one bar. And that is 12 bars. That chord progression is the blues, and that is the foundation for basically everything that we're going to be doing today. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but first I wanted to let you know that if you'd like to learn guitar, now is the perfect time because I have huge Black Friday sales going on for my online classical guitar course, as well as for my online music school. So if you like to learn at your own pace, Classical Guitar Pro guides you over six hours. You'll learn all of the fundamentals of technique, how to read music, and even do your first recital. And if you prefer one-on-one -on -one lessons, I have a school called Arpeggiato, where you can take one-on-one -on -one lessons with expert teachers. So don't miss the Black Friday sale. Now back to the video. At the root of a lot of blues music is improvisation. Yeah. You're never playing the same thing twice, and you're never playing the same notes the same way twice. So if I were to play a blues one day, I may play a completely different set of notes while using that chord progression as the foundation. So, yeah. bop, 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 bop. You're just kind of working up on your, your five, you're going like, yeah, and so each one of those, that's one bar, and you play that four times. You can do that on each one of those chords. And when it goes up to the A, same idea. Back down to the B, or sorry, to the E. Now with the B, you can't do it open, so you, this is a bit of a far stretch for me, so. I might just not play that. I might just go. Yeah. So I'll switch back and forth. My cool. fingers feel like making that stretch, which I can't really do. It feels a little intense. For me. On an electric guitar, I might be able to. Yeah, you can do that. So <laughs> you can do that. Again, with this, really no firm rules. It's however you want to play it, which yes. I think is a big difference that I noticed right away between the blues and classical music, is you're like, play this this way. But with the blues, it's like, eh, if it sounds good, it's fine. I like it doesn't really, you don't really need to think about you're playing it right, you're playing it wrong. Because I think so much of the tradition of this thing is just, it's an oral tradition. Yeah. It comes yeah. from, I mean, you, you trace it even before slavery, you trace it back to roots in like traditional African music, mm -hmm. and none of that stuff is written down. It's like this guy shows the next guy, and then guitars come into the mix, and it's an oral tradition, and the nature of oral traditions is things change around. It's not yeah. firm and specific. And I should even say, with like the blues progression, I said, here's the, the, the 12-bar blues, you can do a lot of variations within that too. One of the things you said so far that, that's really surprising me is I I always knew it in its simplest form and maybe this was the, the most complicated variation I ever uh, learned, but I never actually knew you could do a seven chord on each, yeah, each that's, chord. That's kind of the basis for it, but again, like there's times where it would be the minor chord the whole time. Really? And so there's minor blues, there's major blues. I've heard times people use this progression with like major sevens. 
go to like, yeah. you, you hear that too and it's really like there are no real firm rules the only thing is once you agree on whatever you're doing you probably should stick with that so why don't we now if you're feeling okay with that why don't we try yeah. playing through this sure and the first time we play through i'll kind of highlight the chords with you Please. and then the we'll play it again and then i'll take some liberties with my rhythm approach but i won't go into the world of soloing yeah. okay one two three four that whole thing again and this time I'm going to decide to play around with it a little bit because okay. even when I'm playing that I'm like I want to do other things <laughs> and that's the it's nature of the blues is I'm feeling something I want to be able to put that in the world yeah. but uh, that's a, a big part of it so let's let's do this again Okay. and I'm going to still play with those chords but I'm going to accentuate them a little bit differently add a little bit of something to it a one two three four <laughs> be playing the rhythmic role and there's I think maybe a very important concept that we should discuss right now and that's the idea of call and response which okay. is at the root of a lot of western music but a lot of it comes from the the blues tradition and the idea is one group says something the other group responds and so I'm trying to think of an example of a field holder like they'd be working in the field and someone's saying I'm working on the field all day hey oh da 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 Hey, oh, it's a terrible example, <laughs> but that's the idea is someone says something, it. someone responds. And you hear that general concept in the blues a lot. So, woke up this morning, down and down, 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 down. So, call, response. Love it. That's so cool. You're essentially, you're filling out the negative space. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny you said it because... This is, you know, you can find this in many styles. It's not just a, 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 a product of one style. It just makes a lot of sense. You know, the singer's done singing. Nothing's happening. This is yeah. a, a moment to fill something in. I do the same thing even like in a, I'm playing like a Baroque opera. I'm playing lute in a Baroque opera. The singer's done. There's, there's a bar. It's empty. This is my moment. You know, it's, it's like an instinctual uh, yeah. thing. So. It's at the root of a lot of music. I think just with the blues, you hear it really f at the forefront of this. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that the only thing is I, I know how to like improvise on a scale, but I have no idea how to do it in, a, in the blues style like you just well, did. Why don't we uh, let's move over to that world? So we talked some rhythm stuff. You can play the rhythm for me. Let's move into some soloing. Who doesn't love soloing? <laughs> so here we go. One, two, three, four. First thing and the best place to start with the blues is the pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go like too far into the theory behind this because I think probably a lot of your viewers would probably know the pentatonic scale. Uh, it's a, one of the, the many things that we're taught in early stage with guitar. But yeah. we're playing over an E dominant seven type of blues. And so the easiest thing to do is just take an E minor pentatonic scale, which is uh, open E. 3rd fret, open A, 2nd fret, open D, 2nd fret, open 
G, second fret, and then on the B string you go back to going up to the third fret, and then the E string you're back home with that same thing again, open E. So that would be the E minor pentatonic scale. And with that, you can play over any of those chords, and it's going to work, and you can find the inversions yeah. all across the guitar neck. So that can serve as a bit of a, a framework for that. So I would okay. say, like, your first blues progress or your first blues solo is, hey, pick some notes from this, see how they sound. Okay. And the one thing that I would usually mention to people is, as you do that, try to think of not just um, picking notes at random. You're not just picking nice. random notes. It's more... Can I kind of tell a little bit of a musical story with this? Nice can I, way. yeah? Can I make a, a melodic something with this where there's something to follow? So yeah. instead of just like running up and down the scale picking random notes, you might just create a little melody line. That's like an idea. That's a motif. Yeah. And then you can always repeat your motif with a slight variation. Yeah. And then now you're creating music. You're not playing random notes. You're telling a bit of a story. So you see, like there, I just played four or five different things that are clearly related, but they're different. And now it's creating a little bit of, of a uh, of a of a musical piece. I dig it. Do you want to try this? I have no idea what's, what's going to happen, but let's try it. So, <laughs> yeah, what I'll, I'll say is pick notes from the E minor pentatonic yeah. scale, and just try to think about making a musical thing with okay. those. And I think you do. You ever go? Yeah, sure. You can, you can use the whole guitar neck. Like I would recommend using the whole guitar neck. Um, okay. It's more like if we're doing the first lesson, I would just say you stay know, here. Keep, but I'll, I'll keep but if you want to, if you feel good about playing any notes from the pentatonic scale, by all means, I'll, go I'll, nuts. I'll start here and let's see what happens. Okay. One, two, three, four. Right away, there, it clearly shows that there is a lot of musicality to what you're doing because I can hear you thinking in terms hmm. of phrasing is what we kind of call these musical sentences. There's direction, and like one of the things I found especially nice was at the end you elongated the phrase. It's a natural hmm. pro progression, short, snappy thing, short, snappy thing, and then it leads to this big, nice, long phrase that you did at the end. You know, we do this in classical music. Um, I, I was I was taught it as uh, apples, oranges, and lots of other fruit. That's like the phrase cool. structure. I've never heard that. I like it's that. It's a short thing, a short thing, and then an expanded version. And very often in classical music, you have, so all the way back to Bach and before, you have very often a two-bar phrase, a two-bar phrase, and then a four-bar phrase. And so, you know, these ideas are... are They're are universal in a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. And so I would say, like, that's an introductory lesson to the blues, and I hope you enjoyed it. This was great. I mean, you, you expanded my mind here a lot, and I, I love the concept of kind of like turning off the analytical side and just feeling it through hours and hours of experience. So this is great, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a treat. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're not already subscribed, please just subscribe to Samurai Guitarist. I love his videos, uh, and I hope you check them out. So thank yes. you. Thank you. Until next time. See ya.